What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. Today we're going to be covering Fell Winter's Helm once again, but this time I'll focus it around endgame for both solo and team play. Quite a while back I did a Stasis and Fell Winter build, showing off the new buff that Fell Winters and Seventh received, and upon sharing it with the folks over on Reddit, many of them gave me some interesting feedback on the build, from good to bad sides to it. The post was popular by all means, but the feedback was the gold mine I was looking for, so I've decided to take those feedback and utilize them in the way I know best. This build here is near identical to my previous one, with a few noticeable changes for weaponry, mods and subclasses, and not focusing so much on just a singular debuff to do the work. From playing around the build, I have managed to hold my own in master level content with enough debuff and control available that I can single handedly take on multiple champions and still come out on top. This time round, we have a lot of debuffs occurring from different angles and using Chaos Reach alongside these debuffs means you can put in some serious damage for the brief duration available. Lots of things to cover and break down for you guys to know, but one thing for certain, this is a build you can rely on. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. For starters, the subclass we shall be using is the Atonement of Control for its long lasting super against single target enemies and its unique traits or perks it can provide for the users. Chaos Reach is a fantastic boss or single target DPS super to have when you need to really melt through an enemy's health very quickly. When it's combined with something like Geomags, it can provide the user even more DPS for longer duration which against a raid boss for example can make night and day compared to not having the exotics on. However, we aren't using the Geomags for this build this time round. We are instead using Fell Winters to utilize this debuff applications to apply even more damage when needed. Now, why Fell Winter you may ask, as the exotic only works off of powered melee enemies or finishers? Well, Fell Winters effects can work off of powered melees available for the Warlock, including the projectile kind. A Tomb of Control has the perk ability called the Ball Lightning perk. That is both a powered melee and projectile that you can launch at an enemy. If for example an enemy is near a boss when I proc it, the effects will apply to the boss and I will get a 30% debuff that I can use. At the same time, simply finishing an enemy is viable depending on how much damage is being done to you in that short time frame, which can be very risky to pull off. We then also have the Ionet Trace perk that will grant us energy to all of our abilities upon a successful kill which I've enhanced by adding in the Overload Wellmaker mod for even more energy. This would mean that after a successful power melee kill and then picking up a well, we can instantly get about a good chunk of energy back and be either near or fully enough to repeat such events again. Now just to be clear, I don't plan on using Fair Winters against bosses as it's not reliable enough to put off in such a chaotic environment. On top of that, Fell Winter succeeds against groups of enemies from minor, major to ultra for its full effects to be utilized. Taking out a major enemy for example with my melee will spread its effects far and wide and is incredibly noticeable when small arms are applied. We can also use Chaos Reach to mop them up while they're dazed and to be fully honest, this is a setup that works out really well when there is too much things happening on screen. The constant debuffing and ability gain for high DPS in the end makes the pairing of the two wonderful for short or long activities, and something that many players will want to rely on if they like consistency. At the same time, we do have Breach and Clear available for our grenade launcher, so if we can't use Fell Winters against a boss for example, we can always just rely on our grenade launcher to do the rest. For weapons, I've created a loadout to fit most endgame activities that include champions, as they will be the main things that will allow the build to shine. Now, as a heads up, no specific weapon is required, but I highly recommend you use what I have or similar so you know what you are doing in the process. My primary is the 7th Seraph Officer Revolver, which will be used as an anti overload weapon and will also act as a catalyst for creating all my cells. I have thought about this area quite a bit for how I want the build to come out, as I will be using a grenade launcher with Breach and Clear mod for another method of debuff. So I plan to use the hand cannon to create warmind cells for their damage and the effects of cellular suppression mod as well. Now using my grenade launcher with flashbang rounds or fell winters to press an effect, I can take out the weakened enemies one by one with my primary and proc a warmind cell to appear that I can use to further suppress the enemies from moving. With three effects of suppression happening, the enemies don't have much chance of fighting back, which makes the many fights I get into a breeze. 
My weapon also has the Ambitious Assassin and Time Payload perks, which are two perks that are highly recommended for the weapon as a whole, for how consistent and strong they are. I would also recommend as backup you get the 7th Seraph AR for anti barrier champions and to also create all my cells as well. This here will allow you to independently switch to whatever mod is required against the champion you face, as not all champions can be easily countered at times with a loadout. For secondary, I'm using the Truth Teller with Blinding Grenade, Auto Loading Holster, and Destruction Break, and this is a true god roll that has been installed by Banshee until next week Tuesday we set. As I originally planned to use Wither Horde for the build, I decided to opt out of that idea for the very limited effects it would offer for the build. This grenade launcher is actually perfect for the setup as blinding grenades are top tier for endgame content, and grenade launchers generally have strong DPS against single enemies. One thing about this grenade launcher is that it's playing such a major role for how everything would be played out, and without it would lead to most encounters ending terribly for us. For example, the grenade launcher can blind, debuff enemies two times in two different ways, will affect how successful Fell Winter is, and overall push our super to perform better on longer durations. Although any grenade launcher with blinding will do, this grenade launcher is the best of the best, and simply using the blinding nades alone is enough to make taking on all types of enemies a hell of a lot more easier for survival. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Kojuela rocket launcher for the DPS phases I'll be going through. My weapon has the lasting impression perk that would delay the blast, but provide me with even more damage than the standard rocket would offer. As Fair Winters and Breach and Clear will offer a 30% debuff when applied to enemies, champions such as Overload or Unstoppables will be one-shotted or down to about a quarter of health, enough for you to finish. As this loadout doesn't have an exotic, swapping out for Anarchy or Deathbringer are a great alternative to use as well. For the stats, we're going for a very but balanced set of points to cover all areas and provide us the necessary buffs that our abilities and mods will further work upon. For the main stats, we will be using Intellect, Discipline and Strength, and I have aimed them to be around 50 to 60 for the best effects overall. Our subclass is varied and quite honestly flexible in how it gets its energy for us to use our abilities freely. Ionic traits from our subclass will constantly be triggering by the kills made and the amount you get is generous for you to top off easily through other means. As it's passive, we don't need to worry about always needing to activate it when we need it most, as naturally, just playing like normal is enough to cover these key points. On top of that, we have the Elemental Well mod being active, which is mainly there to increase our melee damage via the Well of Irons mod, but its effect for providing extra energy if the Well corresponds with the subclass is definitely worth the investment alone. You'll get around 20 energy back for picking up a single Well. But as we have the Overload Well Maker mod available that grants us 2 upon a finisher, means we can get an extra 40 energy back in total. This may not sound a lot at first, but considering Ionic Trace is constantly active in the background and finishers will be a key part of the build, it all adds up. This rings true for the Discipline section as well, as I don't plan on using grenades that much, but Elemental Wells and Ionic Trace in hand will keep me afloat without needing the mods. This then leaves us with our super that we'll be using a lot. Thankfully, this area is backed up by Ashes to Assets mod and Hands On mod. Both are two areas that link back into our abilities and then further back to the World mods and IR Trace perk. Breaking the build down, you can see the build starts from two key areas, which is the Well and the Ion Trace perk. And then spreads its effects over the leftover stats, which are then backed up further by the corresponding mods for their abilities. This here allows easier control for using our abilities while on the move, compared to always needing to rely on one or two perks to make the build work as intended. This allows less pressure on the players for what they want to use, but at the same time, this can leave you with nothing if you act too rash or don't think through your actions. Both of these are like a double-edged sword, which is both good and bad, as you're fully aware of the strengths and the disadvantages that can spawn from them. Now onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for for the overall role of the build. In the head, we have Strength, Hands On, Ashes to Assets, and Well of Irons mod. Arm, we have Resilience, Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, Overload Hand Cannon, and Global Reach mod. Chest, we have Strength, Concussive Damner Times 2, and Cellular Suppression mod. Leg, we have Strength, Invigoration, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, and Overload Wellmaker mod. Bond, we have Minor Discipline, and Breach and Clear mod. 
As the build focuses on suppression and debuffs, I thought that something like this would work out really well for endgame content that need that type of support from start to finish. At first, I tried to build out in Legend Lost Sectors, which had a number of barriers and unstoppable champions added into the mix. And it worked out really well for how cramped the area was, as all my gear was able to show off its strengths for how outnumbered we are. I then tried to build out in mass level content such as the Empire Hunt, and although I was 20 levels below the required power level, I still had the ability to aid my team when they needed it most. Now, damage was a slight issue for that area, but that was only because of the light level differences. But its overall effects on stopping enemies from moving away from me was very effective in the long run. I would say this is where the build challenged the most for players, as you can easily control a crowded area with a single flashbang grenade, or melee, or finisher. And as long as you proc those effects, you can path the way to victory with little fight back involved. One good example of this is using this build in legend or mass level content against a champion in Nightfalls. If I face a unstoppable or overload champion and manage to stun them, with my gear I can weaken them down to use a finisher that will send a 20 plus meter wide AoE that will suppress and debuff for 30% against all enemies in the area. This will help allow your teammates to kill off as many enemies as they can with ease via the primary or secondary and at the same time I will proc the Overload Worldmaker mod and World of Irons mod and get a 30% buff to my midi which I can then use to one shot most yellow or red bot enemies within that 10 second frame. All of that can be achieved by just one finisher or melee on your end, as the setup is designed around allowing you to achieve that simply. We also have the damage to back this up and can be switched for other things if what is shown isn't to your liking. So at the same time you have a pivotal role that you can adapt and change to as you will. Sadly, this build still has a few quirks that can be fixed, but it's still a downside to the build as a whole. For example, using finishers in most endgame content is very risky to do with how hard hitting enemies are. If you manage to stun an enemy and then weaken them, then the risk is worth the rewards. At the same time, it's not wholly recommend you use this as your main go to as it will only lead to failure at times. We do also have the option to proc his effects via melee, but in something like Grandmasters or Masters in general, this will only be so effective against major enemies. We do also have the option to proc his effect via melee, but in something like Grandmasters or just generally the highest level of Nightfalls, this will only be so effective against most major enemies. Against a minor enemy, sure, but its effects won't be large and noticeable compared to a ultra enemy where you really want to get the most out of its effects. The main issue with the build is that proccing fail winters requires a lot of risk, which for something like Strike, Scambit or even your day to day activity, that's fine. The moment you bring this into master or grandmaster content, this is where the exotic slowly fades off. Now thankfully I do have other means of debuff available, and as long as I proc them, then this key area shouldn't be that much of a worry. But the risk involved for using such a build in most endgame content can place the player in a terrible position of should I risk it or not. Especially since our build doesn't have key mods such as Wild of Tenacity or even Protective Light to help. Overall, the build is still great for any content that isn't Grandmasters, as that requires more dedicated survival builds for the user. It works fine in Master as long as you're near the appropriate level, and anything below that will make the content a real breeze. How you use the build is entirely down to you, but I would recommend you use this build in any activity that isn't too hard, but isn't too easy either. A prime example of this can be the highest level of Nightfalls, or even the most simplest but annoyingest game modes, Gambit. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 lore content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.